I'm in the studio with Jim Roberts. He is uh, a co-op member at the Arts League of Lowell and also the chair of the marketing committee. Uh, he has uh, an art education from Boston University and UCAL Berkeley Extension in San Francisco. So it seems that you've been from coast to coast. What was that journey like? You know, uh, living in California was a, had always been a dream of mine uh, growing up. It was something that I always wanted to do when I, when I became of age that I would move to California. Um, and in 1985, the, I had an opportunity to transfer out there with my job that I was working at. Um, I studied uh, graphic design at the University of California, UC Berkeley Extension. And um, after I finished up that, I returned back to New England. Um, California is a whole, do, is a whole different world. <laughs> I used to say to people that it's like living in a whole different country, uh, uh, very different from uh, New England. Um, and, and I found that I missed New England, so I returned back here uh, after three and a half years. So, so what brought you to uh, Boston area and Lowell specifically? Well, I uh, was born and raised here in Massachusetts and went to school in Boston, as you mentioned. Um, so this has always been my home. Uh, when I returned back here... Um, in the late 80s, uh, I settled north of Boston in, in Medford, in Massachusetts. And um, in, in the mid-90s, I accepted a job with the National Park Service as a park ranger here at Lowell National Historical Park. Uh, and I commuted for three years from Medford to Lowell. Um, but eventually, uh, I had an opportunity to share uh, an apartment with another park ranger. So uh, in 2000, I moved to Lowell and uh, found that I really liked it and ultimately bought a condo here and then a second condo and now currently uh, I'm living uh, with my husband in this house that I have a studio now. So, um, been in Lowell for 23 years now. So the Park Service seems like a really good fit for an artist. How did you, did you choose that path uh, deliberately? Um, not deliberately in that way. I was looking for a job that would uh, marry some of my uh, extracurricular activities, things I like to do on my day off. I wanted a job that I enjoyed doing. I've been working in the hotel industry for many years and working as a freelance as graphic designer as well. Uh, but uh, I, I chose the park service because I thought it would marry some of those uh, outside interests. Uh, what I didn't know is that it also gave me lots of opportunity to use the skills that I had gained as a as a graphic designer and an artist, uh, and um, the service skills that I had gained by working in the hotel industry. So it was a very good fit for me. I was able, uh, throughout the full 25 years that I worked for the National Park Service, to express myself creatively on a regular basis, but also uh, satisfied my... Uh, ambition to share the history and the story and the significance of the place that I was working in on a regular basis. So before the Park Service, what types of commercial work were you doing? Um, well, as I said, I mentioned uh, I was working as a freelance uh, designer and illustrator, but then I, I took a job uh, working for a company in San Francisco where I was there, uh, ultimately uh, became their advertising director, producing their ads and then make, uh, placing them as well. Uh, I did that for um, a little over a year. So right now you're showing acry acrylics at Arts League of Lowell. I've also seen a woodcut there, a really good uh, self-portrait. So your self-portraits were earlier in your career? I used to do a lot of self-portraits. Uh, in fact, I still have quite a few drawings uh, of myself. Um, you know, it's a cheap model, you don't have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Well, specifically though, they are woodcuts. So yeah. woodcuts are something that you did right. uh, you did earlier. I did uh, I did woodcut self portraits. I also did uh, lithograph self portraits. Uh, I did etching self portraits as well. Uh, I studied printmaking for two years at Boston University, and, and when I came out, 
Um, the one thing that I continue, could continue to do on my own without a lot of chemicals involved uh, was uh, woodcuts. So I did uh, numerous woodcuts of myself and um, uh, members of my family and friends as well. Uh, anyone who would sit for me, I'd do a woodcut portrait of them. Um, in fact, the, uh, the other two pieces uh, that are on display at the Arts League of Lowell are, are also other people that I knew. So uh, that brings up a good, uh, a good topic. Where, uh, what is the source material for your current work, the, the florals and the landscapes? Yeah, the current work is um, predominantly photographs. Uh, I, um, I'm not interested in working outdoors uh, because of the, uh, the various uh, elements that one would have to expose themselves to. Uh, uh, I, I like the controlled environment of a studio. Uh, I can listen to my music and control the lights and, and all of that, uh, and, and the temperature as well. I don't have to worry about uh, a windstorm or a rainstorm coming up, uh, which uh, a lot of people who work outdoors are constantly having to deal with that. Um, I find that uh, the, uh, the photographs serve as a reference point for which I can then uh, jump off of. Uh, I, I'm not interested in copying the photographs exactly. If that were the case, why not just put the photograph on the wall? Uh, so I want to reinterpret the photograph uh, as a painting. And a lot of photographs that I take, I take with that intent, with that eye towards how I will then take that into the studio and work with it. Now your current acrylics have a, ser a print or serigraph appearance to them. How did you come by that, uh, that approach or that style? Well, I think there's a couple of uh, numerous factors, really. Um, you know, in studying the Impressionists uh, in the 19th century, you know, they were influenced by Japanese prints, which have that, a lot of that feeling. I grew up being influenced by uh, 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 comic books and comic book art. I, I, I was always uh, fascinated by that. In fact, some of my early paintings were very similar to comic book art in that they were uh, just flat shapes with black outlines. Um, I, I was criticized uh, at one point uh, in a show in New York for my work being um, too graphic in that way, uh, too illustrative. Uh, so the current work that I try to do it is a combination of those uh, simple shapes, but also adding a little bit more detail and a little bit more painterliness to the work. Now that you're retired, how much time do you dedicate to art each week? Well, now that I'm retired, I have all the time in the world. <laughs> so, um, but I approach my art as, as if it were a full-time job. So I do it Monday through Friday, basically from, I would say, 10 to 3, you know, uh, five hours a day. Um, it, one of the things that it does do is that it keeps keeps me moving, it keeps me, it keeps my painting moving. Uh, uh, you, you have to do a lot of paintings in order to get some really good ones. You know, there's uh, one woman uh, that is a mentor of mine, Mary Gilkison, said you have to do a hundred paintings to get one good one. Uh, so you have to paint a lot, and, and by painting a lot, you get your own style. So um, I have uh, certainly subscribed to that notion of painting regularly, and set myself up a home studio here where I just uh, come down, go to work, and, and you know, once I've uh, finished work, sometimes uh, it's, you know, working up until five o'clock, sometimes not. It depends on the, where the painting is uh, at that point. If I've reached a point of stopping in a painting, then uh, it may be the end of the day, or I may pick up another painting. I like to always have two paintings going, uh, so that... Um, if I don't want to work on one any longer, I have another one to work on. And it also keeps me from being too precious with any particular one painting. How do you feel about the viability or sustainability of art in the Lowell area and the area in general? You know, there's, there are a lot of artists, but there doesn't seem to be much traffic and, or interest from the public. Yeah, uh, well, that, it's true that there are a lot of artists and there's a lot of really good creative work. And one of my goals is to, is to get that word out. Uh, uh, as the marketing chair and, and the marketing committee, we want to 
uh, get as many eyeballs on the paintings, especially the paintings that are being on, just shown at the Arts League of Lowell. But uh, I feel like we really need to be promoting all that there is to see and do in Lowell as far as art. We know we've got the Brush Art Gallery, the Western Avenue Studios, Gallery Z, Aeroloft's Gallery, um, and, and of course the Arts League of Lowell. Um, in some ways we're competing against each other for the same dollar, the same buying public, but in other ways we're complementing each other and, and uh, helping to support the vibrancy of the artistic scene here in Lowell. So uh, I'd like to see more people coming up from the Boston area and looking at Lowell and seeing what there is to uh, do and see here in Lowell. In addition to the art scene, there are numerous things uh, with the National Park uh, here and uh, events at the uh, Repertory Theater and the Arena and the uh, Memorial Auditorium. So. Quite you, a lot going on. You also mentioned getting younger artists involved. Yes, uh, I think that that's cr crucial. You know, uh, the majority of the Arts League of Lowell are uh, either my age or older. And we need to get some younger people in here, and I'd like to reach out uh, more actively to the uh, younger community to get uh, students' work being displayed as well as. Uh, recently, recent graduates too, um, and perhaps we can consider a, a show that is primarily student work. So in closing, I want to mention that uh, you can see Jim Roberts' work at the Arts League of Lowell at 307 Market Street in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, you're also at a couple of other galleries. The Airloft, you have some exhibits there occasionally? Yes. Um, the Airlocks has a number of uh, group shows that they do throughout the year, and uh, I've been invited to participate in those shows. Uh, I was in two shows this year uh, at the Airlocks, and I hope to be in some future shows as well. Uh, and then I'm also regularly showing at uh, a gallery in Amesbury called Alchemy Plus Art, which is a relatively new gallery that has been showing my work consistently since July. All right, well, Jim, this has been excellent. I really appreciate the time you've taken and uh, share your experiences and your art with our viewers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you.